Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about Helicobacter pylori and how it survives in the human stomach. So Helicobacter pylori is a bacterium. It causes peptic ulcers, otherwise known as stomach ulcers. It also can cause inflammation in the stomach known as gastritis, and in some cases it can even lead to stomach cancer. Although it's important for you to remember that about 80% of carriers are asymptomatic. So not everyone who has Helicobacter pylori actually has any symptoms. Helicobacter pylori is also a neutrophile. That might surprise you. It might surprise you because I just told you that it infects the human stomach, which has lots of acid in it. So how can it be a neutrophile, a bacterium that thrives in more neutral conditions and is not able to grow in acidic conditions? It actually has an optimal growth right around the, a pH of six. We know that stomach acid is a pH of one or two. So this seems to be a disconnect. How does this work? Well, it works because H. pylori creates a less acidic microenvironment. It does this by producing an enzyme known as urease. So it produces urease, which catalyzes this reaction. It takes urea, reacts it with water to produce carbon dioxide and ammonia. The ammonia is then spontaneously converted to an ammonium ion because water that's present in the area will donate a, a hydrogen ion. And so that happens spontaneously. And the ammonium ion is very basic. And so by producing urease, H. pylori can have this reaction happening um, and, and basically produce large amounts of this ammonium ion, which raises the pH in the area immediately surrounding the cell, making it less acidic and closer to this optimum growth pH. So now let's kind of see what this looks like in a picture. So here we have the cells lining the GI tract, and then we have three different zones. The zone up top here is a pH close to two. This is where the gastric juice or stomach acid is. Then there's a mucus layer that's on top of the cells lining the GI tract, and the mucus layer has a pH that's closer to four. That's still quite a bit lower than the optimum pH of six though. And so what does Helicobacter pylori do? Well, it inhabits this zone right here in the mucus layer, really close to these, these cells that line the GI tract. And remember, it's pumping out, each of these cells is pumping out this uh, ammonia that gets converted immediately to ammonium ions, which raises the pH a bit. So the pH of this layer is more like six to seven. So right in that optimal growth range for Helicobacter pylori. And so now you can understand how it can survive in the human stomach. There's also a cool diagnostic test for Helicobacter pylori that is based on this reaction. And it works because the patient drinks a solution of urea, this stuff right here, where the carbon is radioactive. I'm going to indicate that with an asterisk. And we know that if a patient drinks urea and Helicobacter pylori is present and making urease, and it's going to convert that urea with some water into these products, and this carbon dioxide that's produced will also have that radioactive carbon. So if the patient who drinks this solution exhales or breathes out radioactive carbon dioxide, then their doctor is going to know that they have H. pylori in their stomach and can prescribe them some antibiotics to treat that infection. If you're interested in learning more about bacteria pH requirements, learning about acidophiles and neutrophiles and acalophiles, then see my video on bacteria pH requirements. You can also check out my video introduction to enzymes to learn a little bit more in general about how enzymes work. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching Biology Professor.